Hey everybody, welcome to Let and Lunch. My name is Mike Basic. Uh, my wife Sandy and I are members of the River of Franklin Park. Mark asked me to come to you today, read a particular scripture, and discuss it briefly. So that's my goal for today. So the scripture is Luke uh, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40, and we're going to jump right in. Uh, it is titled The Triumphal Entry. <clears throat> And after he had said these things, he was going on ahead, ascending to Jerusalem. And it came about that when he approached Bethpage and Bethany, near the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, in which, as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one yet has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Thus you shall speak, The Lord has need of it. I always found that very interesting that uh, that he sent them to get this colt, this donkey, and uh, the only thing he armed them with was uh, the phrase that the Lord has need of it. Uh, very interesting. And those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? Interesting question. <laughs> and they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus as they threw their garments on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he was going, they were spreading their garments in the road. And as he was now approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, Rebuke your disciples. And he answered them and said, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. Really interesting passage. Uh, I always liked, as I stopped for a second, I always liked that part where he just told the disciples, if someone asks you why you're taking this donkey, you tell them the Lord has need of it and they'll let you go. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and then they went and uh, as he proceeded along the road, they had, uh, they had taken their garments, um, they had put them on the donkey, they put Jesus on it, and they went down the road, and all of his disciples were coming out. Uh, the scripture says that, um, that they, the reason they came out was um, they praised God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Uh, this was, uh, the whole time leading up to this uh, had been a time where uh, Jesus had performed a number of miracles and had taught them a great deal leading up to this. He was going to do a lot more of this uh, in the upcoming days, but he did a lot of that leading up to this, um, explaining to them what the kingdom was like, um, raising Lazarus from the dead, um, feeding the multitudes. There were, there were all these miracles illustrating that he was the Messiah. And uh, the disciples were really, and not just his disciples, but uh, the multitude, which were disciples of his also, were really... Um, catching on to the idea that this could really happen, that he could really be the Messiah. Um, the unfortunate part of it was uh, they were looking for a Messiah that was going to overthrow the Romans and put the Jews in power in their own country. Uh, Jesus had an entirely different um, motive for what he was doing. Um, he was accomplishing a completely different purpose than what they expected. His purpose was to provide salvation for all of us, first to the Jews and then to us, the Gentiles. And they just they just couldn't grasp it. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I would have seen it any differently. Um, that entire perspective was something that uh, required great study in the scriptures and also um, explanation by Jesus, which he spent those last several days doing exactly that. Um, I want to spend this last minute discussing that the last little interplay uh, between the Pharisees and Jesus. Uh, some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, interesting for a second, that he doesn't, these were not um, Pharisees that were disciples of his or followers of his. They were just in the crowd. Um, I would think perhaps watching, waiting to see if they could trip him up on something. And they, they thought they had found it here because they said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Um, Zechariah and uh, Habakkuk both uh, prophetically speak of this arrival into Jerusalem on the donkey as a messianic or um, an, uh, 
accomplishment that the Messiah would do as part of revealing himself as the Messiah. Uh, seems quite obvious that the Pharisees knew this. They understood what this act and their praising him, Hosanna in the highest, um, all the things that the, the uh, crowd was praising him for was indicating that they recognized that he, they were hailing him as their Messiah, as their Savior. And the Pharisees knew exactly what they were, what this meant. And they said to him, rebuke your disciples, stop them from doing this. The, the, you, you're blaspheming here. And he answered them and said, I tell you, if they become silent, the very rocks will cry out. Saying, I think, instructing them and saying to them that um, prophecy will be fulfilled. My father's word will not return void. Um, and basically putting them in their place. Uh, clearly they, they were not in a place or a position where they were going to, they were going to, um, uh, intercede with the crowd or they were going to stop the crowd from doing this. They were using this more as a, as an opportunity to find fault with him. Just one more little, um, coin that they would put in their bag to later accuse him of blasphemy. Um, unfortunately for them, um, he really, he is the Christ. He was the Christ then, he is now. Consequently, this isn't blasphemy. He was the son of God. And this is prophecy that had to be fulfilled. One of many that would happen during this last week. Um, I always found it very comforting to know that God wanted us to understand these things. He wanted us as a people. He wanted the Israelites. He wanted us, the Gentiles. He wanted all of his people to understand all of the things that were happening, um, Christ's first coming, his second coming, we are given revelation, we're given hints, we're given, um, we're giving indications, we're giving confirmation that we can trust in God's word, we can trust in the words of Jesus, because God told all of us what was going to happen ahead of time, and these fulfillments, these prophetic um, happenings were evidence of who Jesus was, who Jesus is, the provision that God made for us, and why we can trust him. I hope this is, uh, has meant something to you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. God's blessings on all of you.